Welcome to the Feed Your Family Tonight podcast. Do you dread hearing the question, what's for dinner? Whether you spend your days keeping up with toddlers, running kids to after school activities, or juggling a career and family, getting dinner on the table can be a struggle for us all. I'm Marie Feebach, a business owner, wife, and mom of four. I'm on a mission to build stronger families one dinner at a time, and I'm here with tips, tricks, and inspiration you need to feed your family tonight. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Feed Your Family Tonight podcast, episode 159. I'm your host, Marie Feebach, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. Today, we are going to be talking about fall fruits. I'm going to talk about some of the fruits that are in season during the fall, and a few of them I'm going to tell you how to eat them, how to clean them, because some of them are a little precarious, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But before we do that, I wanted to give you a little bit of background of some things that have been happening at Feed Your Family tonight that you may have noticed, but you may not know what's really happening with them. And I thought I would share because it's kind of fun. If you have been following Feed Your Family Tonight on social media in the past few months, you've noticed that the podcast episodes have a different look for their social media posts. And they kind of go into really bright colors and they have little white icons on them. But you may not know that each of those colors and each of those icons have a little bit of a meaning. And the meaning is kind of loose, but when you scroll through, each of these colors are tied to kind of a specific topic when it comes to Feed Your Family Tonight. It follows the colors of the rainbow. It goes with some of the new branding that's been happening since the summer in Feed Your Family Tonight. And these colors all have kind of little meanings. So the first color is a red, and at the top, there is a icon of a clock. And anytime that there's a red podcast, I'm talking about time, time management, how to cook dinner faster, how to get dinner on the table when you don't have time. Anything that has to deal with time is often categorized as a red topic. The orange, which is today's podcast, has a little carrot icon at the top. And the orange is when I'm talking about food and ingredients. The yellow has a lemon icon at the top, and that is usually something personal. It's either an on-air coaching call, or I'm sharing something personal about myself, just some behind the scenes of Marie and the Feebach family and that type of thing. But the yellow is kind of has a personal touch to it. The green has a little measuring cup at the top, and that's when I'm talking about recipes, things that have to do with recipes. I've got one coming up on substitutions that you can make for recipes. Blue has a little salt shaker at the top and blue is when I am talking about skills. So I had one on knife skills. I have one on salting your food. I love the little salt shaker because if you've been around Feed Your Family tonight for a hot minute, you know I'm a little bit obsessive about salt. I'm kind of a salt snob and I really believe that people need to be using salt more and using the right kinds of salt so that they can get the most flavor in their food. The purple is the last one. It has kind of a little knife and fork icon at the top. And when I've got the purple, I'm kind of talking about motivation. That's where I kind of get into the topics of the emotional burden of feeding your family or how to feed your family when you don't feel like cooking. But it has to do a little bit with motivation and helping you stay on track feeding your family and not feeling discouraged when you're hitting the drive through but find ways to make dinner work in your home. So let's just kind of a little background about what's been happening with the social media posts. When you go to the Feed Your Family Tonight website, you can click on the podcast tab and you can kind of scroll down and see all of the colors. And you know that each of those colors is kind of a general idea of what this podcast is going to be about. And so I have six colors. And for the most part, I pretty much just rotate straight down the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And I get a variety of topics in the Feed Your Family Tonight podcast. So if you didn't know that's what was happening with all of the bright posts and the bright colors, it's a little bit of a way to give our brains a way to say, oh, that's what she's going to be talking about today. I just think it's fun and bright and colorful and adds some meaning to what's happening on the podcast. So today's an orange podcast. 
and we like to talk about food and ingredients. And today's topic is fall fruits. I love fall fruits. They are probably some of my favorites. I also really like winter when we get deep into the citrus. That's part of the reason why the yellow with the lemon is my personal because it's one of my personal favorites. But fall fruits are really fun. I'm going to do a quick rundown of some of the fruits that are in season in fall, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to dig deep into a few of these fruits. So fruits that are in season in fall, of course, apples, everybody knows apples are a fall fruit, figs. Grapes are kind of at the end of their season, but there's late season grapes. Limes are kind of at the beginning of their season, but there's early season limes. Pears, pomegranates, quince, and persimmon are all kind of some fall fruits. Now, some of those you may have had experience with, and some of them you may not have. I'm going to kind of start with pomegranates. I can remember the exact first time I ever had a pomegranate. I was in college. It was 1996, the fall of 1996. And a gal who lived across the hall from me, her name was Heidi, and she offered me a little bit of her pomegranate. And I had never had a pomegranate. This Kansas girl did not live a very exotic life. I mean, it was exotic to get fresh raspberries around my house. But I loved the pomegranate and she shared with me some of the pomegranate seeds and I just thought they were absolutely delicious. Little did I know how hard she had worked to extract all of those seeds from the pomegranate fruit. If you have not tried to clean a pomegranate, there are tricks to make it easier. There are a lot of YouTube videos that you can go and look at and some of them will teach you how to cut it and then just kind of bang the outside with a wooden spoon. I have found for me that doesn't work super well, but the best trick I have ever learned for cleaning pomegranate seeds is to do it in a bowl of cool water. Because when you open up a pomegranate, there are the little seeds that are in these jewels of glossy fruit, teeny tiny jewels of glossy fruit. And that they're surrounded by this bitter kind of a creamy yellow, light yellow pith that you don't want to have with the seeds. The seeds will sink to the bottom of the water and the yellow pith will float to the top. And it helps you separate the seeds from the pith much easier. So I love doing my pomegranates in a bowl of water. The other trick that I learned is that if you can cut the pomegranate skin without getting too deep into the flesh along the equator of the pomegranate. If you think of the pomegranate as a globe and you have the flower end on one side and then you have the bottom on the other, if you cut right along where the equator of the globe would be, so right along the center and you kind of just barely go through the skin without getting into the flesh, then you can kind of twist the pomegranate apart And you're going to end up with two halves and they are going to have the seeds that are almost in like a star shape around and you can gently turn the pomegranate inside out and the nice chunks, for lack of a better word, of all of these beautiful pomegranate seeds will come out in beautiful clumps and then you can just kind of rub them off with your fingers into that water. And if you have any of that yellow, creamy yellow pith. It'll just float to the top. And that is how I clean a pomegranate. Now, if you have a better way of cleaning a pomegranate and you swear by the spoon method, I want to meet you in the Feed Your Family Tonight Facebook group because I am all ears and want to learn. Because one of the things about pomegranates is it's a lot of work for a little bit of fruit, but they're so delicious and they're so bright and they're so cheery. And there's just something really neat about these like juicy little orbs of sweet, tart pomegranate seeds that I love. So if you've got a better method, you let me know. The next fruit that you may not have had a lot of experience with is quince. Quince, they kind of look like a misshapen pear and they are ridiculously tart and sour. You really cannot eat them unless you have cooked them. I have never personally actually cooked with quince, but My sister-in-law, anytime she has a charcuterie board, she almost always has a little bit of quince paste there. And it is the most delicious, 
side to a charcuterie board. It's thicker than a jam. Quince paste is made from the slow cooked pulp of the quince and it gets this kind of peachy rosy color and quince naturally has a ton of pectin in it. Cranberries, which actually I didn't say at the beginning, they're also in season in the fall. And apples both have a lot of pectin in them, but quince has even more. And pectin is what makes things like jams and jellies get to that thick consistency. The quince has natural pectin in it, and you can make it into this paste by cooking the flesh of the quince down and then straining off any water because you have to cook it kind of in water. Then you puree the the quince and it kind of has that grainy texture of a pear almost and then cook it with sugar and then it forms this like gelatinous paste that is absolutely delicious. You put a little slice of that with some sharp cheese and some nice fatty meats on a charcuterie board and it is absolutely delicious. So I am a fan of buying quince paste rather than making my own. But if you wanted to be ambitious, you could make your own. But it comes from this fruit that is looks kind of like a funny shaped pear and cannot be eaten unless it's cooked. But it's absolutely delicious when it's added with sugar and cooked. Another fruit that you may or may not be familiar with is the persimmons. Persimmons are a fruit that come into season and they almost look like tomatoes. They kind of have that skin like a tomato and they are absolutely delicious, but they need to be ripe in order for you to enjoy them. And there's two kinds of varieties of persimmons and I cannot even pronounce the name, so I'm not even going to try, but one of them starts with an F and they look more like kind of like a squatty tomato. And then the other one starts with an H and they have more of like a, almost like a teardrop shape and their skin is a little bit softer. The, the ones that look kind of like a squatty tomato, they have kind of a flat bottom and they have a hole on top and you kind of have to cut out the hole and the core, almost like a strawberry. You know how a strawberry has that leaf and then a little bit of that hole at the top. And these are really good sliced on charcuterie boards, the outside skin can be a little bit tough and they can be eaten. You want to eat them ripe, but they don't have to be like crazy, crazy, crazy ripe. The other ones that are shaped more of like a teardrop, they have to be eaten like so ripe, they're almost rotting. And the skin is a little bit softer, but when you slice them, they kind of tend to break down and they're best for like cooking and that type of thing. You really, they won't have a pretty shape on a charcuterie board for you while the ones that are a little bit flat and squattier will have just a beautiful shape on the charcuterie board for you. You can also buy them dried. One thing about persimmons is that they ripen after they have been picked so you can buy them when they're still hard and just let them ripen. You can leave them on your counter to ripen, or if you want to ripen them a little bit faster. I've talked about this before, how bananas release ethylene gas and they cause fruits to ripen faster. So you can put them in a brown paper sack with a ripe banana and the banana is going to release that ethylene gas and it's going to help them ripen a little bit faster. Kind of like peaches too. Peaches do that. They ripen after they have been picked. And so it gives you a little bit more time to ship them and that type of thing. So persimmons are really fun and really delicious. And I absolutely love them. Another one of my absolute favorite fall fruits is pears. And there are lots of different varieties of pears. Some of them are firmer. Some of them are softer. They have different colors. And my favorite way to eat pears is poached. This is one of the most underrated recipes on my website that I absolutely love is poached pears. My children think that it is the best dessert I've ever made in my life and they are so simple to make. I take pears and I peel them with a peeler and then I slice them in half from pole to pole. So from the stem to the bottom end and I core out the stem and the seeds that are in the center and then place them in a skillet with a little bit of sugar 
and cinnamon sticks and allspice. I sometimes put in a few peppercorns. I put in star anise sometimes if you like that kind of licorice flavor, almost like you're making like a mold cider. And then I put in a little bit of wine and let them just gently cook in the wine with the sugar and the spices. And you end up with these soft pears that are laced with warm fall spices and just a little bit sweet. I don't put much sugar in them, just a little bit of sugar. And they are absolutely delicious. If you use red wine, they're going to get this pretty bright jeweled color on the outside. And if you use white wine, they kind of maintain their natural, beautiful pear color. And either way, they are so, so delicious. I love them with both red wine and white wine. It is one of my favorite ways to use up like a half a bottle of wine that has been at the back of your refrigerator and you know that it's going to start turning to vinegar soon. You can, I'll even freeze wine that I know I'm not going to drink and just have it for poached pears during the fall season. I will often serve them with a creme anglaise for like a really fancy dessert. And creme anglaise sounds really fancy, but it's really simple. It's just a really kind of a thin custard that has vanilla beans in it. I'll serve these poached pears on a bed of this thin, creamy, sweet, fatty custard, and you get kind of the earthiness of the pear and the warm spices, and then you get the creaminess of the creme anglaise. And oh my goodness, friends, it is like my favorite fancy dessert. But what I love about it is you can completely make it ahead of time. So I can poach the pears like two or three days ahead of time. I can make the creme anglaise the night before it because it's better after it's chilled in the refrigerator and eat anyway. And then all I have to do is just plate it to serve. And it is just my favorite fancy dessert. Now my kids, they don't like the creme anglaise. They don't want the custard. They just want copious amounts of these poached pears. And they're not boozy. By the time you get to them, all of the alcohol is cooked out of the wine because they gently simmer and all of the alcohol burns off. But and if you don't like alcohol, you can use like an apple cider and that works just fine. They're delicious poached in apple cider or even apple juice. And they are so, so good. But that is like my favorite fancy fall fruit. The other fruit that is so funny is figs. Fresh figs were very hard to come by in Kansas until recently when they became kind of all shishi. And I love a fresh fig, but what I love even more are dried figs, which were the figs that I kind of grew up with. I, I, you're either going to love me or you're going to hate me, but I love myself a good fig Newton. I love the taste. I love kind of the grainy texture that's on the inside. The same with the dried figs. There is a local Lebanese market here and they have these amazing packages of dried figs. And again, talking about charcuterie boards back when I was talking about the persimmons is dried figs or fresh figs are both amazing on a charcuterie board, but dried figs you can kind of enjoy year round. So that's today's episode. It's an orange episode about the ingredients of fall fruits. I hope that you can enjoy some of these fall fruits. And if you haven't dug into some of these things like persimmons or quince that are a little bit more exotic. Maybe they won't be quite as intimidating. If you see one in the grocery store, maybe you'll try one. Again, with that quince, you're going to have to cook it. And the pomegranates, if you know a better way than to cut it into the water, let me know because I'm all ears. Join me over in the Feature Family Tonight Facebook group and we're going to talk about fall fruits. For now, friends, I hope you're doing well. Take care.